Geolocation, satellite data, social media are all sought after alternative data sources for any trader. But can the residents of the small Colorado town, South Park, help us create new data to use in a trading strategy? Can you outperform the S&P 500 by trading according to the released episodes? If you are already a South Park fan, a few notable episodes might come to mind. Kyle is intimately involved in the development of a revolutionary new product called the Human Scent iPad, revealed by Jobs himself. Since the airing of that episode, Apple grew 15 times, while the S&P 500 merely quadrupled. Timmy's successful new car service makes him a lot of enemies, including Elon Musk. Tesla is up 1800% since then, while the S&P less than tripled. The children of South Park are split in the battle between Xbox and PlayStation, bringing Bill Gates and the head of Sony out to battle in the console wars. Microsoft, the owners of Xbox, have grown nine times since, while the S&P roughly tripled. Are Matt and Trey from the future? Do they have a crystal ball predicting future 10 bangers? Or do they just have an unmatched understanding of where growth can occur? To test the viability of such a strategy, we will have to build a portfolio and see its performance through backtesting. For this step, we first need some data. To build a portfolio, we need all the stocks mentioned in any South Park episode and the date at which it aired. While we could watch every episode again, luckily, there is an easier way. We find the Wikipedia list of all the episodes, and then go through each one's wiki page. Each episode will have many hyperlinks, through which we loop to see if they refer to a publicly traded company. If we find any, we store the episode date and tickers. You can find the code used to extract the data in the video description. One point that ought to be mentioned is that this is not a foolproof way to get the data. Some stocks mentioned in the actual episode might not be found on the Wikipedia page, and some have links without actually being on screen. The first problem is not that big, and the impact of missing one stock is negligible. The second part might pose some issues. A way to solve this is to clean the data manually. One example is the princess on Viacom in the episode Cartoon Wars. Whether you remove it or not is up to you. I did not do this for this video. After all this, you should have a data frame that looks something like this. This data is enough to build a portfolio, but not enough to test it. Since this portfolio intends to be a longer term strategy, not an intraday one, we can just use the close prices for each stock. The easiest way to get them is to use a free API, which should result in a table that looks like this. With all the data gathered, let's inspect it. There are 35 unique publicly traded companies mentioned in the series, which does not make for a very diverse portfolio. The first mention is in an episode in the late 2000s, more than 20 years ago. The most prevalent company is Twitter, mentioned in a whopping 9 episodes. Having an entire string of episodes dedicated to it, this is no surprise. Over the entire period, the average monthly return of the S&P 500 was 0.93%, while the average return of companies mentioned on South Park over the month following the air date was almost 6%. Less of a difference, but still significantly better returns for South Park are seen at the one-year mark. And the best South Park return is of build a Bear Workshop having a 600% return in the year after the air of the episode, the pandemic special. So, what do we need to know before we build a strategy? Well, when and what stocks to buy or increase our positions, and when and what stocks to close or decrease our positions. We can simplify things a bit. We will only keep our starting AUM. Whenever a new episode mentions a stock, we will rebalance our positions by trimming the existing ones. We will only have long unleveraged positions. 
The idea is that any mention of South Park is a signal to buy, regardless of the positive or negative connotations in the episode. Since we are not looking for short-term profits, we can trade right before market close and assume that this is a trade opened at the close price. And lastly, we will ignore spreads and fees. Before we use the actual data to create the strategy, let's look at an example of how things would pan out. We start with $100. When an episode airs that mentions Tesla, we buy $100 worth of it. Two weeks later, when we have, let's say, $120, Microsoft and Apple are mentioned, so we close part of Tesla and open Microsoft and Apple, resulting in a 1 over 3 split between them. This is equivalent to closing all positions and then buying the stocks according to the specified ratio. We could close Tesla completely and go 50-50 between the remaining two, but it's better to consider a window of validity for the Tesla prediction. When this window expires, we close the position and redistribute the returns between the remaining open stocks. We keep going like this, rebalancing with every subsequent episode that mentions a stock or at the end of a validity window. Now we have all the tools needed to accurately compare the constructed portfolio with a benchmark. As mentioned before, the first stock we have in our dataset is from December 2000. Still, we will start trading from the 1st of January 2009. Before this, the data from South Park is very sparse, and hence it's tougher to have a fair comparison. Also, we set the window mentioned before to 18 months. Everything is outlined now. If you invested $100 in January 2009 in the S&P 500, you would have roughly 6 times that amount now. You can see on this graph the big COVID dip and the subsequent low. Even with this, the market recovered after a short time. Can our constructed portfolio really stand against this? To plot them on the same page, we have to extend the y-axis. Only now we see that trading according to South Park brings an extraordinary increase of 34,000%. Even if we cut off the analysis before March 2020, the constructed portfolio more than doubled the returns of the S&P 500. But, after that point, there is almost no comparison between them. Even with a bigger temporary loss due to the pandemic, the constructed strategy recovered and then grew some more. This is on the shoulders of Apple and Amazon, who were components of the strategy at that point, but also thanks to Build a Bear Workshop, the best performing stock in the portfolio. We can visualize the portfolio structure starting from 2009 to the present day. The initial years are very diverse, with a varied set of companies being mentioned constantly in the series. Some of them are companies that weren't yet traded at episode airtime. One example is Twitter, which we have in our portfolio, starting from the IPO. This information sparks a necessary conversation about the biases that come into play during this comparison. The main one is the survival bias. As mentioned before, Twitter is referenced in the series even before it was a publicly traded company. At the same time, we could have had multiple companies mentioned that never reached this point. This way, we are spared the potential losses due to the simple fact that these companies died before reaching the market. Similarly, a company declaring bankruptcy in the past years would not be marked as publicly traded on Wikipedia and hence never included in our analysis. So, what now? When the next episode of South Park comes out, should you go straight ahead and invest your life savings in the hottest companies mentioned? This is obviously up to you. As always, past returns do not guarantee future returns, and market volatility is ever-present. The data does look promising, but keep in mind that this analysis has its biases, 
and the intention is to show how to use web scraping and backtesting to verify your assumptions and test your strategies before investing according to them. Thank you to the Patreons that supported this video and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this and would love to see more, like this video, subscribe to the channel and hit the alarm bell to be notified when new videos are released. Leave any comment about this subject below or on the dedicated webpage. For more info, please check the description box below. See you next time!